Hi, thanks for tuning into this video, okay? I'm going to talk about what we really mean by differentiation from first principles, okay? Because the other two videos I've done so far, I might have done more of them by the time you watch this, okay? But the first two videos I've done so far don't give you a proof of why differentiation works, okay? This is what I'm going to cover with you. Now, for most syllabuses, you don't need to know a proof, okay? Maybe that should have been syllabi, but I'm a mathematician, okay? Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry for any English teachers out there, but to be honest, if you're an English teacher, why are you watching this? Okay, sorry, I forget I said that. Um, but anyway, yeah, you've not actually seen a proof of why a differentiation works. It's more of a kind of, from a pattern certain point of view, and that's what I did in my first video, look to see what the pattern was with the change in gradients of the chords, okay? That was never a proof, and nor should you accept that as a proof. It's a demonstration showing you what's actually happening, but it wasn't actually a proof, okay? The first principles is kind of more like it, okay? You don't need this for most A-level courses, like I said, so it's just for um, a bit of fun or you're just interesting, interesting why it actually works, okay? So how does first principles work, okay? Well, what we do is we look at one particular point, okay? And that's x coordinate x, okay? And then the y coordinate, of course, is gonna be f of x, okay? So notice I'm using the x f of x notation. So this is for the graph y equals f of x. And I'm looking at a point that is close to it, okay? And a point that's close to the x coordinate is going to be x plus delta x, okay? Delta x means a small change in x value, okay? And then the y coordinate will be given by f of x plus delta x, okay? And those are coordinates. And what we're doing is we're finding the gradient between... He has a terrible straight line. Absolutely terrible. So shocking. I'm going to have to rub that off and do that one again. Okay. So we're finding the gradient of that chord. Okay. Because that's going to be an approximation for the gradient of the tangent. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Now suppose the function is y equals x squared. Okay. So I'm just going to change that. Okay. Just and we're going to apply this approach to any particular function. Okay. So x squared, x cubed. You name it, okay? You can even do it for sine x, e to the x, okay? But I'm just going to keep it algebraic, okay? So we could do it for y equals x squared, okay? In which case, uh, here, we're going to have coordinate x, x squared, okay? And then here, we're going to have coordinates x plus delta x, and then x plus delta x squared. So we need to know what the function is so we can work out the y coordinate, okay? And then we're going to find the gradients, okay? We're going to find the gradient. So the gradient um, is going to be that divided by that. Sorry, that subtract that. Okay, x plus delta x squared subtract x squared all over, and then that subtract that. X plus delta x subtract x. Okay, and then when we simplify that. Expand the brackets, x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. Um, that's how we write delta x squared, okay? Um, we don't write it like this. You could do it if you want, I suppose, but just bear in mind this notation, that means that, okay? Just in case you're wondering. Okay, subtract x squared, that's the numerator. And then the denominator, of course, is just going to be delta x Okay, so that's an expression for what our gradient is, okay? Now here's the really interesting bit. This is where it gets really fascinating, exciting, okay? What happens as this point gets closer and closer to this point here? So I'm choosing a point that's closer, 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 closer. What's happening? We're saying that delta x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? So as delta x, the small change in x value gets very small, okay? Then the point here gets close to the point there. Okay? What if it's on the point exactly? Okay, then delta x is zero, isn't it? Okay, delta x is zero. But you can't substitute delta x equals zero, can you? Because of this bit here mainly, you cannot do something divided by zero. It's, it's undefined, okay? And your calculator will not like it very much, okay? So we can't do that. What we can do, though, is look to see what happens as delta x tends towards zero, okay? What happens is delta x tends towards zero, okay? And that's what we're going to do, okay? That's what we're going to do. Before we do that, let me just simplify this expression, okay? 
I'm going to simplify that a little bit to um, x squared subtract x squared is that 2x delta x plus delta x squared okay, over delta x. And then notice that with the divide by delta x, this could be 2x plus delta x. But the reason we can't just substitute delta x equals 0 into it, as I said, because originally we had this, okay, with the divide by delta x. Okay, and strictly speaking, you shouldn't put in um, a divide by 0, okay? So that's why we say as delta x tends towards 0. As delta x tends towards 0, of course, this tends towards 0 as well. And so we have the gradient will tend towards 2x like that, okay? That's essentially what first principles um, is all about, okay? We write it a little bit differently, okay? We write it a little bit differently, okay? We write it using limits normally, okay? And the limit expression is written like this. The limit as delta x tends towards 0 of 2x plus delta x is equal to 2x. That's, that's a better way of writing it, okay? Because it's a limiting value, essentially, okay? A limiting value means what is this... Um, tending towards, what's well, getting closer and closer towards, okay? So this, of course, is not dependent on the delta x, okay? But this bit actually is delta x itself, okay? And so it just tends towards 2x. So that's, that's that, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you one more example um, of how it works using the function y equals x cubed, okay? So let's just do that. So y equals x cubed, and then we'll have x cubed, and oops, beg pardon, we'll have x and then x cubed as our first coordinate point. So then we'll have x plus delta x, and then that would be x plus delta x cubed as our second point. Okay, and we'll work out what the gradient is between these two. So the gradient is going to be again difference in y coordinates. I'll tell you what, can I expand the brackets out at the same time just to save myself a bit of space to be honest? Okay, so if I expand the brackets there. That's going to be x cubed plus 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus delta x cubed. Um, if you need more time on that one, pause the video and do it yourself, okay? But trust me, that's what you get, okay? Um, and then subtract x cubed. Okay. I'll come back to that expansion at the end of the video. Now is not the time, okay? And then difference in x coordinates, x plus delta x, subtract x, it's just delta x, okay? So I can write down that first of all, and then simplify it a little bit. So the x cubed, subtract x cubed, so that would be 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus delta x cubed, all over delta x, and then I can just divide throughout by delta x, to get 3x squared plus 3x delta x plus delta x squared. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say that the limit of this, okay, as delta x tends towards 0, okay, so let me write it like this first of all, as delta x tends towards 0. Remember what I mean by that? I mean as this point gets closer and closer towards that point and it gets to the point exactly, okay, then this here will tend towards write down, will tend towards 3x squared and then plus 0, plus 0, okay, so tend towards 3x squared, okay, and again we write that as limits, it will be something along the lines of limit delta x tends towards 0 of this is equal to 3x squared, okay, and then you can do the same for any function that you wish, okay, that is basically what first principles is, I've given you, um, the easiest possible version I could think of. There are other versions out there using h to represent small variables, changes, okay? Um, there's slightly other variations on first principles, but since this video is not aimed at a syllabus that requires first principles, okay? I've not done it in that way, okay? I've just done it to give you some sort of um, understanding of how that works, okay? Now that would normally be the end of my video, okay, but I'm just going to mention something else, just as an add-on, okay. So at some point, I had to expand this, x plus delta x cubed, didn't I? And if you remember, I just wrote down what the answer was, like this, 
and it may just be the case that you're wondering how can he do that while he's talking at the same time and how can he just write it out without showing all the working, okay? Well, it's because I've done it so many times before and because I'm just using the coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1 on Pascal's triangle to do it, okay? So just very, very quickly, Pascal's triangle looks kind of like this, okay? Where that's the zeroth row, first row, second row, third row, fourth row, and fifth row, and whoops, it's another ten, and so on. Okay, and the idea is that you've got ones down these sides there, and then one and two is three, one and two is three, one and three is four, three and three is six, one and three is four, one and four is five, six and four is ten. So one, one and five is six, five and ten, fifteen. 10 and 10, 20, 10 and 5, 15, 5 and 1, 6, and uh, I'm just squeezing 1 on the end there. Okay. And then, because I'm doing a cubed expansion, I've got 1, 3, 3, 1. So you can see there, 1, 3, 3, 1. And then, uh, sorry, the video cut, so I better just do that last minute again. It was only the last minute, so annoying. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay. And what I'm going to take you through next is this one. So the 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, okay? So if you have to do the expansion of x plus delta x to the power of 4, I'm going to use these, they're called binomial coefficients, okay? So binomial coefficients, so 1, that would be x to the power of 4, and then the next number will be 4. And what's happening is the x cubed terms are diminishing in powers, and the delta x cubes are increasing in powers. So then that would be 6, and then x to the power of 4, x cubed, x squared, and then delta x squared, and then the next number will be 4, x to the power of 4, 3, 2, x to the power of 1, delta x, delta x squared, delta x cubed, and then last term will be 1, delta x to the power of 4. Okay, So those are just there to help you to quickly expand brackets of this x plus y to the power of n, basically. Well, I'm hoping you found that useful. If anything, it should be useful for any algebraic work you did, let alone all the first principle stuff, okay? All right, have a good day and thanks for watching.